On this episode, on the mean streets and back alleys of New York City. The minute you're a hit, you're a target. One man is peddling a product that'll cost you dearly. These are around $20 an ounce, whereas these are around $100 an ounce. Whoa! He's selling what's known as culinary crack. He's 22 years old. Just did a sale out of the back of his van for three grand. I'll find out why top chefs are paying top dollar. Honest to God. I've done some things in my career. Unsavory things. Things that I don't discuss in polite company. Who's our guy? It's not really for me to judge or weigh in on the legality or ethics of the various activities I've profiled. What? Buy stuff from you? But some stories simply need to be told. Never mind the risk. You're gonna deal with everything from smuggling to counterfeiting to outright violence. Yeah. Today I'm tagging along with this guy. We'll call him Ian. Ian is a businessman, patrolling the byways and back alleys of Manhattan, distributing a product that commands up to $1,000 an ounce and attracts the worst sort of competition. The minute you're a hit, you're a target. Why does it say So we fly under the radar, so no one knows who we're selling to. It's an international trade. She just spent about four or five hundred, something like that. Boy. With supply lines running from southern Italy all the way to the Big Apple. When you came here, you said you were working for uh, an Italian company? I was, so I, I basically got the job out of high school. I was doing over a million in sales for them out of my parents' garage. You're kidding me. And so... Uh, You're selling a million dollars worth of fungus. That's right, at just 22 years of age. Ian Perkiasta is one of New York City's number one suppliers of high-end truffles and other edible fungi. For those who don't know, truffles, not the chocolate kind, are the fruiting body of a subterranean fungus and a hotly desired, crazy expensive ingredient in high-end cuisine. They've been eaten since antiquity and written about since people were writing things. In 1481, fabled historian Bartomeleo Platina wrote that the sows of Noza had no equal in their truffle hunting skills, but required muzzling so they didn't eat their discoveries right then and there. Dogs are now the preferred truffle hunters since they're good at finding them, but don't care much for the taste. The most sought after variety are white truffles, which will run you $2,000 to $4,000 per pound on average. Although there was that three and a half pounder back in 2007 that went for $330,000. So it makes sense that Ian distributes his product like a modern day superfly. But rest assured, he's totally legit. Have you achieved fungal glory? Oh, yeah, I definitely have. I mean, I've always wanted to fill a bathtub full of truffles and just lay in it, but. It's, uh, it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure it'll, it'll happen one day, I'm sure. Yeah, but you know, just because a thing can happen doesn't necessarily mean it ought to. Our story began a few hours ago in Queens at the headquarters of Ian's gourmet food company, Regalis. His day starts early, preparing the orders that he'll hand deliver all over Manhattan. So this is where we keep all of our mushrooms and truffles. Um, these are all truffles that came in this morning. Very, very rudimentary, obvious. It's an underground fungus that grows on the tree roots of certain trees. Underground fungus. So uh, as opposed to a mushroom, which is an overground fungus. Above ground, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, right. we mostly import truffles from France, Italy, uh, Australia, and Spain. Um, these are from Italy. These are the Australian black truffles. Is there a difference? There's a huge difference, actually. Uh, this is actually a variety that typically grows in our are winter, mm -hmm. and they have a black interior, and they have a lot more fragrance. When did when when did this happen? Like when did when did people suddenly decide I got to put truffle oil on my popcorn, which is now happening everywhere I go? I mean, I feel like truffle oil is a huge, well, was a huge fad. I mean, fresh truffles have been eaten for for centuries. Uh, truffle oil is actually made with a synthetic flavoring, yeah, and so we don't actually like truffle oil too much. And so what we've been able to do is... You actually import, hate it, don't you? I hate truffle oil. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, it's totally Because you know what? I heard mild annoyance in your words, but I saw 
profound <laughs> contempt in your face. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty horrible. And I mean, once you, once you have a few drops, it feels like you're burping fake truffle all day. Ian might seem pretty particular. That's because he is. But he's also knowledgeable about these fungi. So they call them truffles. Why do they call them truffles? Yeah. I mean, the Italian word for truffle is tartufi, so I guess truffle is just what's the natural Americanized it's, it's word. Italians, man. It. Italians and the Greeks go back far enough. They literally claim every word is theirs. Steve's Greek. He's unbelievably arrogant when it comes to everything. You know? <laughs> Madly. Ah. Um. Look at that. It's kind of beautiful. This is your love, right? I mean, this is my love. Yeah. This is my passion. I fell in love with with truffles one day when I was eating at a restaurant. It's your basic love story. Boy meets truffle. What was the exact dish? It was a black truffle ravioli with a foie gras sauce. It was a pretty decadent dish. How old were you? I was 15. I just thought they were amazing and wanted to buy some to cook with. And so I spent $200 of my savings and I bought this kilo of truffle and they were FedEx from France. Yeah. And I thought, why not try to sell some of these to some restaurants to you know, repay, repay my savings? Are you doing this because you just want the taste of truffles on your palate? I mean, originally it was just to, just to be able to replicate that black truffle ravioli. And then it turned into something uh, much more than that when I realized that there was uh, such a huge market in the US for truffles. And it's a good thing Ian realized the value of his truffles because he's been growing his business ever since. So we sell to around uh, 200 restaurants nationwide. The majority of them are in New York. And um, these are all restaurants I've been selling to for, I guess, the past five years. Mm -hmm. So is there real money to be made in these tumor-shaped lumps of fungus growing wild in distant European forests. So these are the summer truffles. Summer truffles. From Italy. These are around $20 an ounce, whereas these are around $100 an ounce. Whoa! So there's, a, so there's a tremendous price difference between these two varieties. And those are from where? These are from Australia. Australia. These are all truffles that are white interior, as uh -huh. you can see there. Can so, you hold that up to me when you cut it, if you don't mind? Sure. So that's like five bucks right there. So I, really? I try to minimize the cutting. Five dollars. No, you're in them for five bucks. You got your shot, but I'm gonna need to see a little bit arrow. Turns out my French connection metaphor was not so far off base. You've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of truffles lying around. And that's the trouble with taking truffles to town. The truffle trade is trebled, and the tasty targets are terribly tempting. All right, well, what do you say we hop in that uh, tricked out truffle van? Take a ride. Yeah, they don't have this at the uh, continental free breakfast we get. I'm leaving Queens and heading into Manhattan with 22-year-old truffle empresario Ian Perkiasta. And while I'll be riding shotgun, I might feel better if I actually had one, because we are definitely potential targets. I guess any time, you know, the cost of a thing just becomes valuable. It's like a war. People get shot in the forest over infringing on their truffle territories. It's often cheaper if you're smuggling them in, you know? But sure. I've never wanted to take the risk because all I really have is my reputation. And, and so what is your I'm, reputation right now? Well, I, I think it's, it's pretty good. Ian's not just building a rep as a trusted truffle pusher. So we're at our first restaurant. He's a boots on the ground distributor of his own merchandise. And he's keeping alive an old tradition, committing to the personal touch in an age when most of these kinds of orders are done online and through faceless shipping companies. Do you need Australian or summer truffle? Uh, Australian. How much do they pay right now? Those are 480 and these are 590. 480, 590? Yep. Mark, how long have you been buying from this guy? Oh, five, six years at the time? You were yeah. like 19? 18? Around, driving around a PT cruiser. It's coming along wet. So an 18 year old kid pulls up in a PT cruiser, knocks on your door, and says, Psst, "Want to buy some uh, truffles?" It was the first time. It's definitely uh, we're used to dealing with some uh, older uh, salespeople. Yeah, we'll say that. But uh, you know, it's like the product speaks for itself. He's passionate about it. And he shows up in the flesh. He's doing it himself. You know, we're not he's talking actually doing to a machine. There's right, a right. person that you talk to. He comes. You can talk. You can look. You can feel. This is the reason we wanted to tag along. Honestly, the potential for confusion and graft. <laughs> in the truffle world. Yeah. I mean, between the Australians growing with the French grow, and then between the Chinese thing that looks like that, but really yeah, doesn't yeah, taste yeah. like anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's kind of hard. So it's like, it's all about sourcing trust. And then at the end of the day, it comes down to like flavor and smells. Not to beat my drug metaphor all the way into the dirt, but 
Ian is definitely concerned with the quality and purity of his product. 800 bucks. And he casts a very Thanks. dim view on those who would exploit the truffle business for ill-gotten gain. Within the, the food industry, I mean, no matter if it's oil or if it's caviar or if it's truffle, there's some degree of adulteration of the product. And truffles in particular, like, if it's not Chinese truffles, then it's lying about the origin of the truffles. Truffles in general are very terroir based, like wine. Explain terroir. And everything from soil to geography to weather has an effect on the ultimate taste. Yeah. So a truffle from, from southern Italy will taste different than a truffle from northern Italy. In dealing almost exclusively with New York's most high-end restaurants, Ian is doing business with people who share his passionate commitment to quality. I gotta tell you, man, you could fill a book with what I don't know about truffles, but it just seems like the whole thing is ripe for uh, shenanigans, you know? Yeah, it's all about cultivating a friendship, you know? Making sure he's not ripping us off. He seems to be a very unflappable, uh, steady Eddie kind of guy, you know? Doug, if you're gonna make a call, go ahead and do it. I'm sure they do uh, carry out here at the, uh, at the craft. Yeah, free long distance. What are you looking for exactly? Density, water content, uh, is there any bruising, how the marbling looks on the inside, and then odor. If it has a strong odor, obviously it's been cut for a little while, and they're a little bit older, a little longer out of the ground. If it right. doesn't smell too, too strong, you know it's pretty fresh. I look at them like snowflakes, to tell you the truth. And no two are exactly <laughs> the same. And yet they each look, in their own way, like a tumor. Basically. You, can, you probably don't want to put that in your sales <laughs> literature. 400 grams, 71 grams, 200 grams. It's gonna be a big one. Why is food so expensive anymore? Not enough of it. Huh? But the good stuff. Yeah, you know, like, it's, it's a big thing. We try to serve GMO-free, antibiotic, hormone-free, responsibly sourced, buy from the market, all those great things. And to do that, it's cost more. You're talking about your uh, genetically modified organisms. Then. Yep. Huh. What do you spend? 14, 14, woo! You win for the day so far. There's like three restaurants so far. I think we're about $3,000 in. You know? People like him, that's the key. Gotta be likable. So what's the plan? I mean, I don't have any ambition to be, you know, a billion dollar company that has 500 delivery trucks and a fleet of salespeople because then I lose those personal relationships that I value so much with my, with my customers. Ian had better value those relationships because they are extremely valuable. Like, thousands of dollars valuable. He's 22 years old, he's building a business, just did a sale out of the back of his van for three grand. So I'm keeping track today, we're already over 10. I'm just saying, it's a business. Is that good? It's great. I, I, in particular, was good on that one, I thought. I thought I was okay on that one. You were average. Yeah. After shadowing Ian all morning, I've picked up some pointers. Why don't you give it a shot on this sale? But am I ready? to step into the firing line and become a truffle boy myself. I can go down to like 115 a pound on these. $115 a but pound. But let's start them a little higher, so maybe Wholesale. like... Let's start them at 140, okay? All right. What's up? How are you? Good, man. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. nice to meet you, Mike. How are you? He's about to let me offer you some you truffles. Should... Was it uh, black yeah. winter or black summer? Summer, summer truffles, that's the... Take like a pound. So. pound? If the price is right. Yeah, smell all right. Huh? How much? 140? I think I might have more confidence in me than Ian has in me. It's only 820 bucks. That's it? Yeah. What was that? Oh, what was what? What was that? You, uh... You panicked. I panicked. Yeah, you, you panicked. You, you weren't. Uh, I was gonna give it a much second. No, I was. Uh, well, you didn't give me a chance. You come right up to 140, 140, 140, 140. You have little faith. Next one. Man. Next one. Next one. Nothing. Come on, man. Nope. He doesn't trust me. Fair enough. In this competitive business, perhaps there's some basis for trust issues. Your competitors, they would mess with you. Yeah, I've had I've had a, a tire slash before, so. It's, uh... You figure a truffle competitor slashed your tires. And so now you're under this name. And now we've just put it on the air. I know, you'll have to blur it out or something. Keep me safe. I think you're gonna have to come up with a new name, man. I'm learning the ins and outs of selling high-end merchandise out of the back of a van with truffle wonderkind Ian Perkayasta. And at this point, I don't know how many restaurants we've visited. Will this day never end? <laughs> Seems like that. I do know that after manhandling truffles all day, I am more than ready to taste some. 
All right then. Where are we? We're Boulet. Right in there. David, we need some more cameras. I know. How are you? Yeah, this right. is Mike. Mike. Hey, Mike. How are you, David? David Boulet is one of the top chefs in the country, probably in the world. He opened his first Boulet restaurant nearly 30 years ago, and it holds the distinction of being the first eatery to ever receive a Zagat rating of 29 out of a possible 30. So, am I excited about the prospect of eating truffles prepared under his guidance? Uh, yeah. After 29 years being open, we have a lot of people that are very discriminating in yeah. terms of foodies. Yeah. Like all the chefs I've met today, David is a true believer in Ian and in his mission. This is Mother Nature, and he's got his hand on it. There's I'm, nothing better than this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to life with a little black truffle in it. Would you like to try something right now or just something? Now, just a taste of something. Okay. Finally, the time has come to find out if these truffles are just a faddish folly or if their taste truly makes them worth their weight in gold. Inside is a cheese from France called Cremant that's already mixed with black truffle. How's that? That's unbelievable. Wow. See, this is how they get you. The first taste is always for free. After that, oh my, you're hooked. I mean, that's aggressively good. It's like belligerently good. <clears throat> This is based on a dashi. It would be a porcini flan in France or a chalamushi in Japan. Dig deep and take a full mouthful. Honest to God. So it's just the ingredients talking to you. We're not doing so much. When you're working with people like him, you get out of the way. You let the ingredients speak. And that's what we're trying to do here. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Ian's business might revolve around a unique product, but his success has less to do with what he's selling and more to do with how he's selling it. He's out there in person, pressing the flesh, beating his competition to the punch, and doing whatever it takes to keep his customers satisfied. As long as no one muscles in on his territory, this truffle boy has got the town in the palm of his hand.